All right, welcome back. Uh, I'm going to just kind of give a little bit of a backstory here, and then I've got things running because I've got information coming in right now, and then I'll explain what's going on here in a second. Um, but uh, back it up. So when I was you know, little, I uh, had a lot of the big electric trains, cars. Uh, used to love you know playing with those and building tracks and stuff. Um, and then, you know, over the years, don't really know where they're at right now, but, um, more recently I, uh, went back, uh, to visit, um, East Palestine, Ohio. And then, you know, of course, with, um, the, the, the tragedy there with the train and, and, um, just everything that, uh, kind of went on and is still going on really, uh, I, I was really kind of interested in trains, um, even while I was there, you know, now that, you know, software defined radios, I was kind of really curious about just, um, you know, what kind of goes on with trains in general, like what, you know, what sort of like information, how do they, you know, practice, uh, like, you know, safety and, and things like that. So, um, I did not have time to really figure out what to look for, uh, then, but, but I do now. And so I happen to be, um, close to, uh, some, trains and so what I'm taking a look at now is uh, Dragon OS and you see SDR++ up on the screen I've got a few uh, bookmarks there uh, for some things I'm going to talk about and then I have some software and I'm obviously I'm not the first person to show this software it's been shown before uh, you know in the past on YouTube uh, but it is software that you gotta you gotta register uh, for the site uh, and I will make sure I put that in the, uh, you know, update the link in the description. Um, and then you can get a hold of the software. It's a Windows-based software, but I have it running with Wine right now and have not had an issue. Uh, and it is just monitoring the Pulse Audio for what you see going on in uh, SDR++. I think I have it, yeah, I have it on the EOT, so the end, end of, and I'm learning all this stuff. I'm going to put a link to a video that's going to, you know, just to, it had me so interested in the way uh, everything was being described that the, the gentleman that did the, uh, it was actually a DEF CON video, uh, did an excellent job. And we'll also take a look at his open source uh, application that does a part of what this Windows based software does. So um, anyway, so I'm on, what am I on? I'm on 457.937 megahertz. And I'm looking at the end of train uh, information, which uh, when you go read up on it, it's basically a box on the back of the train. I learned that it replaced the caboose, and 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 so it's back there. And the uh, sensor on the back of the train, sensor in the front of the train, it's just monitoring uh, things. In this case, um, all these these columns are described in some documentation. I'll pull up here, but uh, you know you can potentially tell if the train's moving or not. Uh, you know an ID, uh, batteries, you know status. Uh, y you can't really like see anything you know that would be um, probably an issue uh, for a person to be able to see because um, you could just as easily you know look outside and see if there's a there's a train or whatever. Um, so really it's just it's just telemetry information. I'm I'm, I'm you know I, I don't think there's any issue here and it's just very interesting to decode this stuff and and have a look at it so um, let's see I'll pull up let's see how we can do this so I do have the documentation that came along with this soft EOT user guide you can see it was released back in 2013 and then there's also uh, so it's radio telemetry decoder for end of train devices also does the head of train and I can you can see that right up in here and then uh, this locomotive distributed power units never heard of that before so I went and looked at that up and sure enough on the frequencies I was able to get you know information there so that's uh, pretty interesting and I'll save that for in the description I encourage you to read more up on it and let's just focus on getting these pieces of software running on Dragon OS. So, uh, let me think. How did I get it running? So, I went with the uh, you know just Google uh, Wine App Image 32, and I always end up back at this uh, particular app image for Wine 32-bit. It's a very small app image, and it works really well. So, I scroll down. I um, yep, I always make that mistake. Uh, come down further I see releases 
and you'll see you've got the x86 64-bit app image and then I download that I chmod plus X make it executable and we'll run through um, how we how we actually start these applications up I'll close them out for now didn't really do anything special uh, with SDR plus plus besides um, you know I've got the RTL SDR v4 in there which is supported in the latest Dragon OS ISO or uh, you can also update using the Focal X PPA. I've got the uh, drivers uh, updated, so it will allow you to use the RTL SDR V4. Got the gain at a little over 40. I've got NFM on radio, and yeah, I was playing around with the bandwidth. You may be able to go, you know, smaller than this this width here, but it's fine for right now. And then I save some bookmarks. It's really yeah, the only thing I've done. Uh, and the only other thing you might have to do is so once you get let's see what we got here so if I want to run this I'll typically uh, change directories here and I'll do wine staging and let me see soft EOT dot exe that will start that software up now if it's the first time that you uh, have started wine you're probably you're gonna need internet with this particular one because it's gonna go out it's gonna grab a couple things for wine and, you, and you'll see uh, when you know when it does that uh, but you need uh, you need that to get this running and then all I did here was under uh, file options I had a look around so I left it at pulse audio didn't really change anything there. You can change where you're logging information to. Um, you could even send to this. Uh, now I've not messed with this. This ATS or ATCS uh, compatible server. Not I've not did any of that. I just did everything locally. And if I start monitoring, I want to let's see. I want to make sure. And this is all talked about in the. Uh, documentation I want to make sure I've got some audio here that's like 50 percent or greater continuous level and you might have to mess around with I, I actually I don't have virtual syncs or anything like that right now so if I had my volume on the TV turned up it'd be probably blasting I've had to mess around with the audio in SDR plus plus I've also went to the mixer and now I was uh, playing around with another uh, wider band SDR earlier and putting multiple VFOs in uh, SDR plus plus so I could monitor different frequencies but right now I only have one you'll see uh, I've got the playback turned up and then also on the playback uh, or I'm sorry the recording of soft EOT I got that blast in the, uh, there and let's see so soft EOT 457 you, you you may or may not see information here uh, while I am talking because it just really depends. I don't see anything at the moment. So, um, yeah, we'll just continue on here. You can see there's a movements uh, section that you can pull up. And the, and the software works fine. Uh, we can even go and we will change into the um, DPU folder and uh, because the wine let's see staging is one level up uh, we'll load this up as well I'll just leave them side by side right now you can see I can should be able to switch over to like channel DPU channel three or four you can see it has some activity on it I'll change over to that for a second and we'll see if we can get um, something in we also want to make sure oh yep see we want to make sure we got audio in there which I'm not seeing because I didn't start the monitoring okay there we go so recording Yep, it's kind of where I left it off, uh, up higher. And so I'll, hopefully we'll get, yeah, see, so there we go. So we're already getting that distributed um, information there on the right.
and let's go back to let's try head of head of train <clears throat> excuse me we'll go head of train and we'll see if we get some activity there now a head of train is uh, not decoded in the open source thing that I'm going to switch to here in a second really just wanting to show this after we we set it up there we go so we got one so you can see that both windows based applications work in dragon os and we're getting that head of train information i'll try one more time see if there's anything for the end of train and then we'll kind of move on here and i'll just show the open source application uh, all right well we saw it at the beginning of the video and so you know with anything that's like being done in real time uh, you know of course when you want to show something uh, it might not actually uh, happen when you want it to so I'll just move on and we'll hope that uh, we get some end of train information in the uh, next thing that I'm going to show here so we should be able to stop uh, let me think we'll stop SDR plus plus yeah we'll stop SDR plus plus we can close out of this software and let me think so stop that and we'll change into PYEOT and okay where do what do I mean by that so first um, let's see what was I gonna say here so yeah I highly uh, recommend watching this DEFCON 26 wireless village this uh, gentleman here does uh, really awesome at going through his slide deck and uh, describing things in in such a good way it was very interesting and he is the one that uh, best of my knowledge has written this GNU radio Python based decoder for end of train packets now I've already get cloned this down into this directory here and the only thing that I've had to do for Dragon OS is uh, open up the flow graph and when you first open it up it's gonna have a uh, like a WX um, frequency or QT GUI frequency sync up here that's uh, for you know an older version because uh, you I mean this was probably put together I think in 2018 I just deleted that you can add another one uh, what else did I do uh, where is that at hemming what hamming you know this this window here might this one might be red you just need to open it up uh, click on uh, hamming and yeah I think I left everything else as is it's already set up for uh, like an Osmo com source which works fine with the um, RTL SDR let's see what else uh, interesting that the gains it was working for me but I didn't change those gains so that's it's interesting I don't know if zero equates to auto or what but uh, yeah I didn't change anything else so uh, maybe I'll have to have another look at that and look at uh, raising the gains makes me wonder now uh, you can see it's 457.938 is the center frequency there we'll try it like this uh, because this is how I was using it earlier you can see the V4 is detected and then it just ends there so what it's waiting for you to do is open up another window and we'll do Python 3 PY EOT this is actually doing the decoding and it's all happening over ZMQ uh, from the flow graph to this decoder and I'm probably not going to be uh, lucky enough to get something 
Um, but this is how you would run it. And I know it works because I've got uh, some information uh, out of it uh, previously. And I'm actually going to, let's, let's stop this real quick. I'm just control C and it probably not the best way to stop it. Minimize this. <laughs> oh, I guess I didn't need to do that. So, uh, let's see. Just out of curiosity. I should still be listening there. Alright, well, uh, I guess I could let it run for a while and I will cut out uh, the section of it just sitting here and we'll see if we can get something. If not, then I'll just end and refer you to um, a couple um, posts that I have made on uh, social media that shows uh, this actually working. So, Alright, I'll be back. All right, well, I've waited about as long as I can uh, wait. I probably should have uh, maybe shown this up front when I knew there was some activity uh, close around here. So um, it does work. Um, I've seen it work. You just need to make those uh, few adjustments to the flow graph uh, so it works uh, and you don't have any errors in uh, GNU Radio 3.10. And then just make sure you use uh, Python 3 to run that file. And I would encourage like looking at it. You can see the source code. At least, you know, it's it's open. You can read it. Um, and maybe somebody could um, even add to it, you know, after, after all these years. So, all right. There is some other applications I'm looking at. Uh, I've just not really got them running in Wine. But it just seems like there's just like the, for aircraft and and you know tracking uh, you know of, of the various information about aircraft um, seems like there's a, a pretty big um, community that does I, I would I guess uh, the same with uh, trains so I find that uh, really interesting hopefully this was um, helpful and again it you know the information is is out there all right thank you